Dirive agus fátrúð huig Q&A vi nebeltada. So, welcome all to this month's May's Q&A. Is Misha Shuan agus sho Emma. Um, o Vice Eyes Irish. Kichul tu Emma. Tá mig a brán is Shuan, kan sá tu fein. Gamach gana magad, gahan wa her fad. Mar sin ta galor kishtana agin an shohinyov agus er what let's an khid kishtale even chin so we've lots of questions today um perhaps you'd like to read the first one there Emma Kenta I would indeed okay so on khid kish no uh well tagan she o Christian in northeastern USA and Christian says I noticed, I noticed that the Irish words for uncle and aunt look and sound very much like English. I've been thinking that there must have been words for these family relationships before contact with the English language. Is it a coincidence? Did the words change over time? Gurv Mahagut. Okay, so firstly, Gurmila Mahagut Christian um, for contacting us and writing in. So Siobhan, Isoka, I can pass the mic over to you and see what you think of this. All right, so what I'd say is, um, well, the thing is, uncle and ancient, they are indeed very similar to the English words and they would be seemingly closely connected to them. So uncle does seem to have been borrowed from English, very possibly, or at least from anglo the Anglo-Norman word, uh, which would have come from old French and would have originally come from Latin. Um, an interesting thing is that I found a reference to uncle in a manuscript written as far back as 1705. So that just shows that it isn't that recent an addition to the Irish language, uncle. So it's been around for the past few hundred years. And another way of saying this, other than simply uncle, if you want to say it in a more Gaelic way, you could say drahar ahar or drahar mahar. Of course, drahar can be pronounced a few different ways, um, but uh, jerahar or a few different ways, but um, drahar ahar, drahar mahar, as you can see, it's a father's mother or a father's brother, I should say, or a mother's brother. So that's another way of saying it, a bit more literal. Um, it's a similar enough case with enchin. So enchin, uh, which is the diminutive form of ent. So that, of course, comes from ent as well. Now, it's unclear when that entered the Irish language. Um, the farthest back I could track it was back to the early 20th century. The first decade of the 20th century, it seems, it was, a, it was used then. Before that, it may have easily have been Drifur Ahar, Drifur Mahar, same sort of ideas we had there with Drahar Ahar and Drahar Mahar. So um, the fathers of the mother sister. And so it's it's very interesting that this uh, the, the, that, um, the etymology of those words and all of that. So um, do you have any um, input on that there, Emma? No, Sean, I think you've said it all. Um, yeah, I checked the etymology myself because it is it is a very good question. You know, oftentimes you think, well, it must have come just directly from English. But oftentimes these older English words are, you know, they're they're coming from Latin or Old Norse or French. So, you know, it's oftentimes it's not just English that these words come in contact with. But in this case, it was. But um, yeah. Interesting. I didn't even know that now. The 20th century. Interesting, Siobhan. So it's always uh, interesting to learn something new, isn't it? I hadn't known about it either. It's uh, it's always interesting. And similar fad. Marcin, um ta ar gid chist ila agin agus toshishin ik chacht o Paul. So our next question is coming from Paul, who lives in Galway, but so but is originally from Donegal. And he says, I have a fair bit of Irish, but I'm not a fluent Irish speaker. I can understand bits and pieces of Irish, but I can't understand more Irish. Like I know who I means 
I went into town. But how do I say in Irish, I was in town? Go to Mahagat. So, um, can um, can the chair ha for you shin, um, Emma? What would you have to say about that? Sure. So, Paul Gurmila Mahagat. I know oftentimes. That's the first thing. I have a fair bit of Irish, but I'm not fluent. And you know, you want the the basics. So yeah, who I may stach savalia. Now I'd add to your piece there, Paul, savalia vo savalia more. So into the town. So who I may stach savalia more. So I went into town. Um, if you want to then say I was in town, you're going to be saying the may savalia more. The may. So that's the past tense of be so v me and then just if you want to know then the future tense um you could say rockig me ishtach savalimore now i know you're living in galway originally from donny gall so um in that side of the country might be said a bit differently rocky me maybe shimon you can help me out on that that one yeah. but rocky me so while you more, Somalia, yeah, or for, Somalia, you might be more inclined to hear. Oh Somalia. yeah, yeah, yeah. For for um, some yeah, sa plus um, eru. So Somalia more, but in the general case, it would be v me would be I was. So I was in town v me, and then you can use that. You can interchange that v me so while yeah, I was at home v me so shopa I was in the shop. So um that's a good basis to start on anyway because you can just interchange then where you were or where you're going or where you want to go so shawan on valine rod ella lecher leshin i got well she non fuinchin chin that's a very good point you made there about using it almost as a template if you know how to say i'll go to town you know how to say I'll go practically anywhere. Uh, so, or I went somewhere, or will go, because that's the thing. That's a very irregular verb. It, there's only eleven irregular verbs in, in in Irish, but the plus and the the minus to that is that they also tend to be very common, which means you get to practice them lots, but also means you need to know them. So that's why they change so drastically. That's why it's who we may I went. Um, of course, we may is a different verb. That's um, but uh, Rocky may is I will go. So they're very different. Hui and Rocky are very different sounding words, but it's the same verb, the verb to go, which is tea or teig, as you might know it. So that is T E for the I G H. So that's to go. So if you know, as you were saying there, how to say I went and I will go. So, and you can do that with any other verbs or any other thing. So it's really good to to, to know all these different sentences and um folklore.ie for example that's a great way of coming across these common um phrases so i'll just put it up there so there it is folklore.ie it's a very good um website for finding uh phrases and of course it's a it's a dictionary as well but it's very handy for that uh was there anything else then uh when it comes to practicing your irish then paul you might like to try out different things um a nice website there is Laylet, which has some easy and some harder stories and short stories and stuff and you can hear them and read them as well so it's very handy as you can as you can do both um there's also north wall which is north wall that you'd read us um which is on spotify and um, that news wall there, uh, which is slow news, so just news read slowly. But sometimes it can be quite complicated words and that, so don't overwhelm yourself with it. But it's still good to listen and read along. So the text is there. And there's also Vifex, which can be a bit advanced as well, though there are different levels. But it's, it will be good to have a look at that website. And it's clips from the news on from TG Cahar News and there's you can on the last page of the attached PDF you can read the script so it's very good for that um just even even if you don't understand much of what's going on you're still exposing yourself to Irish you're getting used to news to it more and more so um that, that's what I'd recommend as well and I'll have these links um in the blog post um that's linked in the description of this video Marcin, 
um um a good Paul on Kisht on Kid Kisht Ella Martin. So that was a great question there, Paul. So let's get on to the next question. Or what I think can show a leave uh Emma. Kinta, Kinta Kinta. So on Kid Kisht Ella comes from Noreen from Kerry. So Kerry woman. And Noreen asks, What part of the country is Siobhan from? And or which dialect does she speak? I've noticed that she pronounces W for BH, so a W sound, not a V. If she is from Kerry, as I am, and speaks Munster dialect, am I saying it wrong when I say V? I've got the pronunciations confused from learning from different teachers. Fantastic accent, by the way. So, Ahiwan, I think you're the best person to answer this question, since it's about yourself. All right. So, um, I'm from Galway originally, but my accent is more a Tipperary Galway mix with probably Tipperary more to the fore, but there's definitely a mix there. And it's kind of the same when it comes to my Irish. My Irish is basically a Connacht dialect, but it's a bit of a mixture as it has also some influence from Corcoghina in Kerry and probably more influences than that as well. But that would definitely, definitely be, I suppose, the biggest influence um, other than Connacht Irish. Um, so I suppose that's why it might be a bit unique or a bit, it's it's a bit a bit of a mixture. But I suppose that's common in all in, in all languages in a sense. And this one sticks stays in the same place. Um, but there's always going to be different influences. But um, when it comes now to the BH, uh, BH can be pronounced um, similar to a W or a V. It depends. So. When the BH is next to a broad vowel, that is um, A, O or U, they're called broad vowel just to label them as something, to distinguish them from the cylinder vowels, which are I and E. But when BH is next to one of these broad vowels, you'll often find the BH is pronounced as a W um, quite often. But in Munster Irish, you're more than likely hear it pronounced as a V sound. So most of the time, BHs will be pronounced as V as a V sort of in Munster Irish, but it depends a lot on the word. It depends on the local dialect. There's there's more to it than just that, but it's kind of like a general rule. Um, now, when it comes to a BH that's next to a slender vowel, those are I or E. So if you have BHI or BHE, such as the word V, like um, V may so while so more, as, as we had there in an earlier example. Um, v, that's always pronounced V, never we, because BHI, BHI for the neck is, it's going to be V sound. So almost always when you have a V, a BH next to an I or an E, you're going to hear it pronounced as a V sound. Again, it can depend on the actual word, the individual word. Um, it can depend a bit on dialect, but that's a very good sort of basic thing. So if you're if you're Munster Irish, just it's mostly going to be a V sound no matter what, but especially if it's a, if there's an I or an E next to the BH. And I suppose an extra bonus there is the exact same thing that I've said applies to the MH as well. So if you know how to deal with BHs in your dialect, the MH is going to be pretty similar. Um, again, there's going to be just individual words that will be a bit different and are, that are exceptions. But basically speaking, that's how it is. But if if you have an, um, a dialect that's outside of the Munster dialect, um, if it's next to a broad vowel, it's more than likely going to be W sound, though it may not be. It depends, as I was saying. And if uh, but it's still if it's slender it's more than likely going to be v so kind of bear that in mind it's hard to be very sort of black and white about it but those are very good general rules but again go to somewhere like Changlin, which has um um Changlin there i'll just uh, put up the link to that website Changlin there has a pronunciation database where you'll find um, the pronunciations of major words in Irish, but just listen, um, listen to Irish, be it on um, Radio Nagaeltochta or any of the other radio stations in Irish, or also like in that um, 
um, website we, we were recommending earlier, uh, Laylet. So just listen to audiobooks, stuff like that. It'll get you used to different dialects as well and the pr- pronunciations. Um, so that's um, that's the thing. And also just as you're from Kerry, just listening to Kerry Irish more. Um, and Say Hello Yes is um, the local radio um, uh, programme on Radio in the in in um, in uh, in Kerry, so I'd I'd recommend that. So that's uh, that that's uh, that's my two cents, as they say. Uh, and Willie and uh, and and Willie and Riddle are all good to say, uh, No, Neil, that's a good um, rule. And even with your own name, you'd say Siobhan, wouldn't you? Often, and then me I being would. a monster would be Siobhan. So yeah, it's it's perfect example, isn't it? Using all of that with your name. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. And as well, say hello, yes, especially um, with you being from Kerry, uh, Noreen, that would be your best bet as well, just to keep your ear in on it. And even the the hourly news, uh, you can listen to the Schelte, you know, from the south. So it'd be the best um, just to keep your ear on it. But it's nice to be aware, of course, of the other dialects. So at least you... it's. That's the first step, being aware that there is a v or a w sound. And then now now you know the difference and where and when they're said. So, yeah, in team lat. In the chervad, in the chervad. Marshin, um, bit good vicky with Janish, care to tall sna, uh, sna trochna. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we've got, um, we've got. A question here in the live chat so maybe I can bring that up um, but uh, would you like to read it there Emma as I yeah as while I you're putting it up I will so um, Kesht O Alton so Alton asks when did people start pronouncing the broad or as the English or so the English version of the or, yeah, uh, because the authentic broad or in Irish used to be the same as in Italian or in Spanish. So, Gurmina Mahagut, Kesht Anawa, Siwan on Vlainrod Leragut Fuishin, Erin Gade Dolshius, anyway. Oh, well, it's um, always the broad or and the slender or the, the concepts of that. I think it can be a bit, um, I think it's a bit complicated, to be honest. Um, yeah. It does depend, and I think it depends a lot on dialect as well, because if you listen to old recordings from, let's say, the 1930s of native speakers, you'll hear very differently pronounced R's. And a lot of it, I'd say, is just in the past, um, past few decades especially, but even in the past century, it, there's no monolingual speakers. Um, you'll often hear even the, the the Irish accent of people speaking in English in Ireland is getting less and less often. People just they, they hear so so many they're always listening to English English from different countries. So it's going to affect the sounds you make. Even if you often ask a native speaker of a major language today um what their experiences with their native language is if they've learned another language. Say if you found if you're speaking to a French, uh, a French native speaker, let's say, who, learn, who speaks English a lot and let's say German a lot or something, quite often they will say that, that that speaking those other languages has affected the pronunciation of their own native language, which is a major language. You'll often not say that's, that's, that that's the case for every one of them, but even that. So when that actually came in exactly, um, the, where people would just pronounce the R like English, that's a good question. But again, there's a lot of people who speak English and not any Irish in Ireland, and they don't pronounce English words like uh, the way English words are pronounced in anywhere else in the world. Uh, they pronounce English words as if they're Irish words. I suppose the best uh, example of that is film or storm instead of saying film and storm. Um, so it's it's a bit of both you know there's some people and they've 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 magnificent irish accents gaelic irish accents you could say and they might even speak irish Uh, so the whole thing is it's got to do with accents and some people they they speak with a californian accent and they were 
born and raised in Ireland and they, when they speak Irish they speak the same way in Everton so it's a, I think it's a very sort of a, a complicated thing in a sense a bit complex there's a good few elements to it but the dates and to, uh, to this I suppose I've heard in the 1970s some people st- who wanted to be trendy started speaking with an Australian accent so maybe that was the time maybe it was before that because you hear sometimes mm. um if you listen to the older recordings you can hear that mid-Atlantic accent with pe- when people were speaking Irish back like in the early days of of even RT or RT you can hear um you can hear that that like mid-Atlantic sort of accent so there's always been those elements as long as radio has existed I think um you're you're going to hear that it would depend so when exactly it, it would be imp- impossible to 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 um to pinpoint it I'd say but I'd say this the um when radio became common and especially the television is probably the, <laughs> the best um, the best answer to that uh Willian um Willian Thur Hur me I'll get searching Neil Siobhan you just said it perfectly it's language contact and exposure you know of course any language is going to stay the same for the amount of time that there's no not a, a lot of influence of course there's all there's been influenced from the English language for years but um I think that point of television radio all of that when it broke out after that then um you can hear and even with the slender or the slender or often disappears in um with speakers nowadays not as much as uh, the broad or but you'd you'd lose that slender or as well and uh yeah, maybe it's something that needs to be dealt with, but I don't think it ever will be fully. I think that's the way that languages evolve and, you know, pronunciations change and so on and so forth. Well, uh, Anne Kisht, uh, very good question. Um, now, so, so Kisht de Lagin, oh, na trachtana. So we've got another question from the comments. Um, oh, Egon. Arshin, so Egon. Two questions there. So um I'll read this one now. Uh Kishtagum, a he and Emma. What drew you to teach Irish abroad, especially in Germany? A do Asperla. You can add why to words to make adjectives. Thirsty, sleepy. How is this done in uh Askelke? Gurmahagat. Gurmagat Egon. Um well on Kirkesh dumps us so. Um yeah, I wish it was a more interesting story that I was, you know, casted from Ireland across to Germany. But the way that it actually happened is I finished my bachelor <clears throat> in Irish and German uh, the summer previous to me moving here. And I worked for this for the winter and I said in January I leave and off I'll go to Germany to improve my German because I've had a lot of practice in Aden. you know I live near a Gaeltacht um, in my hometown I've had I have friends we speak Osgoelge but I wanted to get that same exposure in Germany immersing myself so I came over and after my month-long German course that January two years ago the plan was six months, two and a half years later, I'm still here. Um, and I saw a job advertised in the, I believe someone sent it to me on Facebook that University of Leipzig were looking for um, an Irish teacher. So I put in my resume and thought nothing more. I said, I'll probably not get it, but why not? And I did, and I'm here and I really, it was something that I didn't have any experience in and I have found a love for it that I never thought that I'd have. Um, And I think it's drawn me closer, even though I'm in Germany, I'm abroad, it has brought me closer to the Irish language than I ever thought I would be. And then, you know, I kept going and yeah, two years later, Tommy Foss and Shaw, I'm still here. So it could have been more interesting a story, couldn't it? I could have, you know, found it at home and flew over for the specialized job. But no, it was a pure chance, but fate, I call it, I think, only one, I don't think I've ever seen a university job advertised on Facebook. So um, it just so happened that I saw it or someone sent it to me. So that's my story. And Kesh, um, Dara Kesh then, um, so yeah, as barely you can add Y to a word, so thirsty, sleepy. Um, so as Gaelge, Siobhan can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just thinking, for a lot of the words, you add an 
oh at the end an ach so for the most part so for example ta tirsha urum is there is tiredness on me and that would be the most common way i suppose well you know one of the ways that you could say i'm tired ta tirsha urum and tirsha is tiredness but if i wanted to say i am tired just in another way um i would say tommy tirsha the same with um okras which means hungry you'd have ta okras urum because in Irish, it's lovely, actually, you, your feelings and your emotions are on you. You don't have those emotions in Irish, You're, they're on you. So, ta tirsha urum, ta me tirsach, or ta ochras urum, or ta me ochrasach. Now, I'm trying to think, is there any ones that you can't do that with? Siobhan and Fulain Thoramagut, what you couldn't do that with? If Does anyone, anything spring to mind? Well, something that actually did spring to mind with, 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 uh, to me there was another um, suffix that's not och, and okay. that is war or var, um, like sunny. Oh, yes. Uh, green war or green var. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll just uh, write that one there as well. Mm -hmm. Green var. Um that would be sunny. Um, and you had there thirsty, and that would be um, tart, what I believe is one of, uh, is a way you could say that. Tart yeah, that would, that would be a tartarum. Tartarum would be the more common one. It's kind of, because um, tartarum versus tome tershuk are both interchangeable and very much as common as each other. But then, for example, tart, yeah, tart, for, I would never really say that. Tartarum or tome I don't know. Yeah. That would be the, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, that's that's yeah. very true. That's very true. Um, so that's the thing. So it's either going to be an och or a war sort of thing. Um, that's that's usually how, and um, so, so that's how usually how that would be all right. And um, that, that's very good. Great questions there. Gehint the fad and kisht the fad. Marshin, um, intach. Yeah, Marshin. Um, Lenny Musharai, Leshna Kishthana, Ahani Kastjach, Nisluha. So we'll continue on with the questions that came in earlier. So, an Khid Marshin and Khid Kisht Ella. Agasanish. An Khid Kisht Ella. Agasasha Sho. Um, Okay, so uh, that isn't a correct one. Go, 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 Vet du hva jeg sier, Sjene Leiv, nå en Leiv Mishé, Leiv Mishé, gå bra. Marjin, please, can you tell me if there are any books available that teach Irish through English, which include written exercises for practicing grammar, vocabulary, etc.? Marjin, kien wolti i taget sen sin, Emma. Ja, så for vi måtte. An, ja, ja. I've had my fair share of looking through many a book, and you're right, looking for a book that has exercising and exercises and grammar and vocabulary um, would be my first one would be Gael Gagan's Throw. I use that myself. I really like that book. Uh, and there is even then a different levels that you can go for. So you can go for your beginner's level or your lower intermediate level. And you can even go as far as then um, there's a grammar, a, a fully just a grammar book as well for that. But if you're looking for both theory, vocabulary and exercises, Gael Gagan's Through is very good. Another one that I like, um, it's a bit older, is Colloquial Irish by uh, Thomas Ida or Thomas Hyde, whatever way you want to say it. Um, but I like that also because it has grammar, vocabulary, exercises, and also a bit of uh, cultural information. It does little key 
key sections where it explains, you know, about the GAA or about Irish food. So I, I quite like that book. And my third one would be uh, Basic Irish by Nancy Stenson. So now, that's a little bit more geared towards grammar, but she does give vocabulary and um, other exercises that you can. But I think oftentimes, off, unfortunately, you kind of you sometimes have to buy two books if you kind of want to go for the theory part and then the grammar. But I think Gwelgan Stroh is a nice mix of that. And either of those two books then would go nicely with it because they follow the same the same structure and the same chapters kind of, you know, you'd follow the same the same levels. So they would be my recommendations, Siobhan. Blaine rather good. Okay, Siobhan, do you have any other recommendations? Oh, you took your fad. On will to your fad. On will to your fad. I guess uh, so. Those were, were great recommendations there. And um, what uh, you'll be what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to go into the blog post in the description uh, later on after this live stream ends, and you'll be able to find links to those different books. Um, so there's, there's none that come to mind, to be honest. Um, those would be, I would say, especially um, Gilga Gunstro would be the best when it comes to, um, the, the books, as a, well, the, one of the, one of the best anyway, when it comes to a book, um, the a textbook kind of thing that has, that, that, approaches all the different elements is very good for vocabulary and grammar and lots and has lots of exercises um also i would say um another thing possibly would be now i think of it and it's not it's it's quite good as well um from that teach yourself irish um course there's also a, 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 a it's, it's teach yourself that's the that's the um the series. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get teach yourself Spanish, you can get everything, but there is a teach yourself Irish, and it's quite good. It's quite good as well. So, um, there's um, so there's that's a common uh, common series you might find in, in most bookshops. Um, so Shane, Shane, Marshin, um, Gabra, Agus, um, on Waterford, Marshin. Bugamishurai Marshin, so let's move on. Um on Alfangabikimitsinish um Marshin Bajar Oto Kisht Elanish. So there's another question here in the live chat. And let's bring that up. It's on the genitive case. Marshin. Uh Fangabikimit call will she? Yeah, while you're finding so, it there, I'll read um, it out for everyone. So Marie asks, so, uh, any tips for understanding the genitive case on Tishil Ginnadach Asgoilge? So the genitive in every language is quite daunting, maybe. But um, yeah, where to start? I suppose with the Tishil Ginnadach, you have to start off by learning when you use it. When do you use the, the genitive case and the the most common time that you'd use the genitive case would be for ownership so you know the boy's hat or the dog's paw or you know the people of Ireland and oftentimes even though sometimes you might not think it might it might not be as black and white as the dog's paw it might be the people of the area you know, you might just say in English, the local people, but Asgailga be winter nahata. Therefore, oit there would be in the genitive. So to get into the full genitive case, maybe we wouldn't have enough time here. But what I would say is, what I always think of is, it might not always be as black and white, as I said, as the girl's coat, the dog's leg. 
sometimes you have to change um, your view on what you're reading. So if you're looking at the words Mwinter Nahoite and you Google that or you put that into Changlin and it would just say the local people, you have to tr almost break that down uh, into, you know, the word for word Mwinter people or, you know, those people, yeah, na hoite of the area, oh, it is area. So oftentimes you kind of, my my corollary, my advice would be to change how you look at the word or how you translate it. And sometimes you have to leave English almost go out of your head and the way that English is formed in the, in the grammar wise. Um, as well, I can't think of any other example. Siobhan and Valine, um, do you have any other examples there? That's actually a brilliant example, Moint and the way that it can be said, like you might just say the local people in English, but how you might say it and my word, the concept quite differently in English, in Irish, as I should say. Um, so that's a very good example. Another thing that might help you is just thinking of two nouns next to each other. So mm. we can even use this Moint and again for that. So we've got two nouns. We've got Moint, which means people and um, or people that are tied together they have, they have some link to, um, to each other and to be precise and art is a place so this there's there's two there they are divided by the uh, definite article the uh, which is in this case na um but the thing is there there's they are still despite this um there are still two nouns next to each other and therefore, the second noun will be in the, the genitive. So that's a more maybe technical way of looking at it. But very, tr it's very true. It's, it's often position. It's very often just position. And there are other cases as well. A very common one you'll, you'll come across is after a verbal noun. What that is now usually is a verb um, with egg before it. And I'll give you an example here, such as of rudha doing something. There we pick Jane of Rudda. Rud is a thing. Here it's in the genitive, Rudda. So it would simply be Rud without the A at the end when it's not in the genitive, but it's Jane of Rudda. So you'll often, um, you'll, you'll often find that in um, Irish with ig jane of or some other verb like that with ig before it. The ig doesn't have to be there, but it's that form that goes with the ig. It's called a verbal noun. Antanamuckal Uh So you might find that uh, as well. Uh, so that's the most common. Those would be the most common. Um, there are a few other times, but um, there's not a huge list of uh, of ones. There's after specific words, no, and yeah. but it, there's just a small list of those. But it's really, I think, four or five instances really, um, where you'd use mm -hmm. the genitive when you narrow it down to just instances. But it's usually just after this verbal noun. It's called a verbal noun, and when there's two nouns next to each other, which usually is position, like um, the people of the place or the places people, you could say, or the local people, as you might translate it in English, but. So, on Kishton Erfat, those are great questions. So, um, I guess we'll move on then. Bugamishurai, mm -hmm. Guji Kisht Daniel, Isasana. Marshin. So, Gopra Marshin. League Mishishin. So, so Daniel, Daniel asks, he says, uh, Do you have for an about size? Are the conventions surrounding the use of Kyapam and Credim? in Irish, similar to those surrounding I think and I believe in English. One could say in English, for instance, either I think you're next or I believe you're next, without very much difference of meaning in many contexts. In some contexts, contexts though, I think is much more tentative than I believe. Is this the same in Irish? Also, one can believe that or believe in in English and belief can be used to mean something like faith. Does cred work similarly in Irish? Ta broner masoch an ocht an kisht an ada agus scapeha gur mil mahaguiv as ocht gach vor ober gohintach le bitesize. Well, gur mil mahagu Daniel and don't ever worry about a long-winded question. We're always happy to answer. 
Daniel is one of our GROW members on Pubbel. So Gurmila Mahagut Daniel and Siobhan, maybe you could shed some light on this. On Kishtafa Daniel. So that's a brilliant question. Now, the thing is, the very, very short answer is yes, Kretsch is used extremely similar to how it is used in English, at least in any um, contexts that come to mind, especially the ones you touched on there. But I'll go into that in more detail. So when it comes to, in particular, those, those contexts such as I think you're next or I believe you're next, they more or less mean the same thing as you were saying. And you would you you would say that capum crejum, they'd be more or less. You would use you could use them pretty much interchangeably in in that particular context, most definitely. Um, and crej also believes also means believe, as in like to believe in something, or to have a faith. Um, for example, the creed begins with crejum inia. And you can also say it, you can also use it in a sentence such as Kredjim e, I believe him or I believe it. So you'd use it very, very similarly to how you'd use the verb believe in English. So Kredj, Kredjim, the im there, that im, that that's um, that stands for me, me. So Kredjim me or Kredjim, as people would usually say quite often say so cridge is the verb itself to believe cridge so that's um so it's pretty much so it's 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 simple enough in a sense it's a simple enough um answer yes it's it's very very similar to how you would use the word believe in english martin and um and really in riddler all good thing we see emma uh no neil is so um credim um agus um, and I'm just trying to think as well. I think I believe Sheelam is another nice one as well. I reckon Sheelam Gwilchishin Igert. I think that's right, but that's often is um I think that you'd you it would come up as I reckon. But again, that one could be also interchanged in there for most situations. Uh but yeah. Mostly interchangeable, but and then cred definitely has more of your religious belief than when you're talking about it in that context. Or even just believing what someone said, or yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. true, yeah, um, or believe in someone. On the, I believe in you. Believe uh, cred them on it as well if you use it then. With that's uh, it. That's it. So, extremely similar. It's <laughs> amazingly mm. similar. Inter. So we have another mm -hmm. question here from the uh, live chat. Kinta, so Gurmila Magat, Asma. So Asma says, hello. So for me, when I first came to Ireland, I tried to read and pronounce the words and expressions and it was quite challenging. Any tips or recommendations for improving the Irish pronunciation. Gurmila Magat Asma for writing in and your question is very, I think it's a very common question for lots of people who would come to Ireland and, you know, see road signs, the first signs in the airport when you land in Dublin, you have uh, both English and Irish. And I think the first thing you need to do is very simply, look at the alphabet Oscoilga and try and get your head around the differences in the pronunciation of the letters and more often than not the combinations of letters as we had earlier on in this um, live we were talking about the BH and the MH and you know for an English speaker someone who would you know have knowledge of English that's quite an unusual you know set of letters to have together so knowing that they are a V sound in both MH and BH makes 50% of the words in Irish easier to to pronounce at least. And um, I suppose your best bet is using online resources for that. And you have to look at your, first of all, the alphabet and the combinations as well, then your vowels. Your vowels are a big one, Oscoilga, I think. And when you get those down, um, it makes everything a lot easier as well. So you have 
a and a father so you know with a a little um what's the english grammar word uh, accent an accent there you go an accent on top you know that's that elongates so a versus all yeah and a versus a so there's plenty online of it um to help you with that she on Valine, is there any i'm trying to think of one that that website maybe that sticks that jumps to mind immediately with very basic on that do you have any recommendations well i know that um the first thing that came to mind there was there's a whole course as part of the bite size irish course there's a whole course in pronunciation and there's a great cheat sheet brilliant cheat sheet it's it's one of the best things possibly the best thing i've ever come across when it comes to just cracking irish um pronunciation as it's called crack irish pronunciation and it's part of the bite size coursey and it goes through that goes through the different pairs gives you examples of words um it's you uh, where you'll find those pairs and how they how they sound and in a way it's not that alien to other languages as when you think of it french um let's just say french um and english they're very different in many ways when you when you're pronouncing the individual letters some letters you might even hear them being pronounced. So it's very common for um, things to vary across European languages, even though they use basically the same alphabet. Um, but uh, when it comes to any particular website or that, then um, I'm trying to think now, one that goes through that. There is a nice video simply on the alphabet in Irish. Um, I'm afraid it won't, I think it's on if if you were to put in Abicher. Nagelge, you'll just hear the mm. different sounds A, B, K instead of Yeah, Abbey. I know it. It's very good. Yeah, a beat and a goil gets straight into YouTube and it should come up. Oftentimes, there's a couple of like the bite size course that we have would probably actually yeah be the best one because the way that it's done on certain websites it could, can look a bit daunting and confusing. But that, along with then just simply the alphabet, would definitely get you started. And then the more you're aware of how the spelling goes, you can start to work a bit more on, you know, pronouncing full words. You might not know what the word means. That makes no difference. You know, try reading small pieces out loud and see how you go. Uh, as we had earlier on again, we talked about Leilath or Nuth Maul. They're very handy, especially Leilath, because you have the audio and the visual then of, of the words that you're going to be pronouncing. So you might not know what is um, being said if you're just starting out with Gwaelga, but that's your goal, first of all, is to get your pronunciation down, it seems. So that would be, I think, your best bet. Um, Shinan Wall, exactly. That's the thing, especially Leila, because they have little stories and little mm -hmm. uh, sentences. So you can simply listen to a few sentences and you're not overwhelmed by a whole short story or the whole news or something. So um, that's the thing. And um, if you liked, if you'd rather uh, listen to the news, there is a news wall. You can go into the description box and read along as well. But it, it would be easier, of course, to um, to to simply. Uh, to simply read short little stories. So if you go into um, Leilette, so I'll just uh, bring that up there since we mentioned it before. So there's Leilette. And there's also videos on YouTube. Uh, if you just, I, I, I would imagine if you just uh, put in Irish pronunciation or pronunciation Gaelic or something, you will come across some decent um, videos on the topic as well. Um, so, Anwa, Anwa Harfad. Agus talk hishtila. Oh, na troch the So there's another um, uh, kisht, another question here from Lucas Jack. So perhaps you could um, uh, read that as well, mm -hmm. dear Emma, as mm -hmm. I bring it up. Yeah. So Lucas, Lucas says while Siobhan's getting it up there on the screen for us, uh, is modo a a or vor a, which are uh, are me or my, your, he, his, hers, Oscailge. Uh, are they used with many ray vocal or prepositions? I'm trying to think, and the only one I can think of is le, i.e. le machorge. I'm just wondering, is there many ray vocals paired with this rule? Kesht wag or mila magus lucas as shin? Shuan, kada chapantu? 
Oh, they most definitely are. There's lots of them paired with different things. I think one of the great examples of this is that you can often come after verbs. And one of the ones, the very good examples of this is bool. The difference between bool and boole. So mm -hmm. if I were to say, wool me machara, I would be saying, I hit my friend. Wool me le machara, I met my friend. Didn't necessarily hit them, I just met them. <laughs> so this, it is another thing as well. It's like um, there's another thing such as the verb bear, and which can mean to give birth or to catch, depending on the ray vocal that actually comes after it. So for example, um, rug she poshta would be she had a child, she gave birth to a child. Rug she er poshta, she caught a child. <laughs> so different things again. So that's common enough. And of course, when it comes to other examples like Le Maharja with my friends, so it's quite it's quite um literal there actually. Le actually means with there. Um and in that case, there's loads like Aaron Mauard on the table, um, um Dun Skull for the school, um, and um or, uh, or sorry, mo. We were on about uh, um, yeah. mo there. So, like, if you had a present for, if you had a brownton as a present or a gift for a friend, to she domochara, it's for my friend. Or um, tome egdol chuig machara. Well, kind of. Or what other one? Um, so I mixed it up there because I'm thinking ray vocal. Um, yeah, I, was, I, was, uh, I, I mixed up the, the, the question there. Fui, fui machara, which means about or under, but tome a kind fui mo chara, so fui mo water about my mother. Um, so you compare like le machara, fui machara, do machara, tome gan machara, and without my friend, that would be another one. Um, yeah, it, they can be almost every single one, depending on what you want to say. And um, depending on context, there's a certain couple of meanings in there, especially with bool and bool le. Um, so your re vocal are important there, I think. Yeah, I was just focusing, uh, laser focusing on re vocal there for a second. Uh, I, I missed the um, the pronouns. Um, but that's it. You could say er word on my table. Um, air the word on your table, so th that's exactly it. So it would, you could, um, I as you said there, Emma, you could pair any of the, any of the pronouns with any of the of of the um, prepositions in a ray vocal. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. You could, you could indeed. So um, and quite similar to English usually, um, it would work as you were saying that like with my friend Lema So it's quite when it, when it's with the when it's both pronouns and ray vocal um, and prepositions, both pronouns and prepositions, they, they would be paired similar to how you would pair them in English, usually. Guma mar sin intach erfad an kisht. Guma mar sin so let's move on to the next question. O Larry Holmes in North Carolina. Agus an kist ata ike no. Er fad agus and er be have so many meanings and are used so often. What is the most useful translation of each? Gura mahagat. Marshin, kien regre vechagat er shah. Laurie, and you are you're right they do have a lot of meanings and use very often in very different contexts so I can absolutely thinking about it now I can understand your confusion or you know you're you want to get a solid answer now I don't think I can give you an absolute gospel solid answer but I'll do my best so if you think about it Erfad and Erbis so Erfad would be the best translation for that I could say now would be altogether. Erfad. Um, if you're using it literally, it means in length, you know, Erfad in length. Um, it's five meters in length, but also altogether. So, best example, on the water, Fad. Very good altogether. Um, or 
Tommy'd well, here we go. I'm getting caught now. Tommy, their Tommy, their fad and show. We're here all together. The Dini are fad. The Dini are fad. Yeah. yeah, all of all we're of all the here. Kind of. All, all together, all. or all, or that kind of idea, right? Again, this is what I mean. Like I can't give you a an exact one, but our bit then um, would be more so <clears throat> at all or any. So, on will. Are Neil? Well, let me think. Dinner or be anyone, any person. Dinner or be. So if you're looking for, I don't know, some volunteers. Dinner or be anyone. But also then you could say um, author be, Aumer be. So any place, any time. Um, or it can be negative too, can't it? it can, in, in a sense, yeah. like. Neil Dinner Bitten Shot, there's no one here at all. Mm -hmm. Um, that sort of thing. Neil Adagadar Bihagam, I've no money at all. So in that sense, I suppose mm -hmm. it's 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 at all really when mm -hmm. it says Neil, when it's this negative verb before it. Um, yeah. So but Kind's... it's kind of at all, that's a good one, I think. So yeah, and sometimes all. you won't have the negative verb, I think. Sometimes sometimes like dinner be if that's the thing i suppose then it can be a bit more difficult to understand if someone someone was asking like how many people were there and you were just going to reply dinner be dinner like there's no one there so no it kind of you, you have to tell from context sometimes but um that's just thinking of at all or any that should help definitely mm -hmm. and try and tell from context then all right shane mm -hmm. good bra Okay, I thought Kest Ella um Stachen son, I suppose I'll go ahead and read. So oh Paul Rice from County Down. And Paul asks, do any of your tutors, i.e. anyone um in bite size here, speak the speak Ulster Irish, please? So a uh, hewan. On will go all out. <laughs> Neil for <Freya>. I don't <laughs> unfortunately. Um but um I would again understand it, but you wouldn't want to depend on me to actually teach you pure Ulster Irish. So no one in the Curtin Bite Size team, Bite Size Irish team speaks Ulster Irish. Uh, Bite Size, however, doesn't focus on teaching a specific dialect, but it does give you the opportunity to learn enough to focus on one particular dialect if you wish. Um, so if you wish to focus on Ulster Irish, then there are a number of um, Irish language organisations and in, based in Ulster uh, that would definitely help you like fine tune your, your Ulster Irish. And also there are a number of Ulster Irish resources available. Now, if you're already advanced enough in your Irish, and even if you hadn't, you might like to have a look at this website called Came Arai. I could bring it up. Um, it should come eventually. KMRI, which means a step forward. KMRI. And um, that's all about Ulster Irish. And there's loads of videos on there with different, um, let's say, Ulster personalities. Some of them are. Um, and there's, uh, there's worksheets and everything. And they are a bit advanced the worksheets. But if you even just wanted to have a listen and listen to Ulster speakers of different backgrounds um, from across Ulster, that's a very good place to go, KMRI. Now, if you're looking for more a beginner's course that goes, that more um, focuses on Ulster Irish, I believe, Enjoy Irish by Etna uh, Nigalachor would be the one, I believe, is, uh, I think that's the book that is that focuses most on Ulster Irish for beginners. Um, but there are, Lots of different resources in Ulster Irish. Um, there's let's see, just lots of lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Um, especially for children, and of course you could use that as well. But there's tons, there's tons of stuff for every age group in Ulster Irish. There's just tons, and um, but um, those are just a pick of the bunch, I guess. And um, but even just. Googling Ulster Irish resources will get you a lot. But do get in touch with us as well. If you are looking for something in particular, if you've, let's say, intermediate Irish and you're looking for something that is specific to that, do do get in touch. Um, because there, I know there's a book called Anchanga Vio um, Ola. So that's like Anchanga Vio is the, the living 
language, the living tongue. And it's a series that focuses on dialects and that there's, a, there's one that focuses on non-story Irish. So there's loads of resources, both new and old. So if you are looking for something more um, uh, more geared towards yourself, uh, do get in touch with us and we'll see what we can do to to find to find that. And um, if you're living in Ulster, there are a number of local groups as well. So um, Ulster is very, very well geared towards Irish, I must admit. Um, it's um, and uh, our, as our other um, provinces, but um, it's, it's, it's great how many clubs and societies and stuff um, that um, focus on Irish are up there. Neil, um, what I can do is in the blog post after this, I have another. There's a very there's good a delay in the in the connection YouTube series. Um, there's a great YouTube series, but it's in. So, um, all right. So yeah, there's a delay. Um, sorry. Move on then to the next. Um, to the next question, and this is one. There's one, another one from the live chat here. Uh, maybe you could uh, read that there, Emma. Um, mm -hmm. let's see if I can find this so, now. So it's a very interesting one on pronunciation. Tim, Tim says, um, why do people pronounce ch as ck? and dh as g so gurmila maga tim and that is a very good question just trying to think of an example to use i prefer working from examples um ch -S -C -K, so all right so we seem to be having technical difficulties there um so let's see all right. Um, but in any way, we'll we'll um, we'll add a new link for Ulster Irish in the blog post. All right. So let's uh, have a look at another uh, question from the live chat. If it'll come up. So. Okay, so to Siobhan Conchach Ternash. Siobhan's going to come back. I think the internet has gone a bit um, AWOL on us, which is to happen. Okay, so Tim. Tim asks, we'll stay on that question with um, CH as CK and DH as G. So um, I can think of good examples on the DH there. That is definitely um, a dialectical difference as with the G. So... If you're talking about a D and a H as in with a shavu, so dull, roll, DH is a R sound often. Not a, not a hard G, but more so a guttural R sound, um, depending on what it's near, of course. Um, CH as CK. I'm trying to think of another example. Um, I well, realistically, it should be oftentimes again with the C with a H with a shavu, it should be a H sound. So, huigme, I went ch huigme. So, I can't on the spot think of any examples as to where I'd hear a hard C, but I would be inclined to say that more often than not, it should be a H sound. Um, yeah. On for so I think either if you could actually Tim if you could think of any words that would give me a good example of that and maybe I can explain it better that would be um, helpful. Okay, so I can see Siobhan is working on her internet there, which is good. Do you with Siobhan? Thought her Nash. Okay, so I think I'm back. Mm hmm. <laughs> So, um, all right. So I presume you got to answer Tim's question there. Yeah. Yes, yes. Gama. Gama. 
and what her fad. Marshin. Um on what? Marshin um on Greek no image glue to no to Kishtil Elkin. Um what oh, very good question here from Owen. Is there a dialect spoken in Mayo or is that similar to Connemara Irish? Siobhan, you might be more you might be more skilled on answering that one now than I would be nowadays on Mayo Irish. So Martin, um so there, so there is um a dialect spoken in Mayo, um and it would be in some ways similar to Connemara Irish, but it's different as well. Uh, it's distinct, and um, but I suppose they, they do share similar features since they're Connacht Irish, and um, you'd also find some Ulster elements to 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 Mayo Irish in a sense, as in they would say my instead of ma, uh, my instead of ma for for good. So that's um, one similarity with Ulster Irish that Mayo Irish has. Um, so. Oh, that's it. So, um, very good. So, I think there's a really bad lag in the connection. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So, all right. So, let's see then. Um, all right. So, very good. And um, we'll, do we have enough time for uh, one more? Um, no, we won't. Uh, we don't. Marcin, good meal, Mahagi, Air Fad. Um, the Kishts and Arafad, of course, she's hoping. Um, uh, Gogi Malishki, Gogi or Lishkil, nor, um, nor Irelin Gok Kish the Ragger. So, um, apologies for not being able to get to every single question. It was great that there were so many questions. Uh, guess, um, okay, Gahin to Kerfad, Gahin to Kerfad, um, Marshin. If you should suggest if you can't live, uh, it was lovely to be talking to you, and there'll be links um, in the blog post connected. Um, that's linked, I should say, in the description of this video. And apologies for the technical difficulties along the way. Um, Marshin, good it it thought good fad. Good morning, Claire. Slán. Marshin. Slán, good morning. 